Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a lovely week and I hope you all managed to get some sewing time in. Um, I've had quite a busy week actually. Uh, there's been so many new fabrics in store. I've had lots of orders. I've got plenty more to show you, um, but I wanted to chat about what I've been up to, what I'm uh, printing out, what I'm wanting to sew. Um, maybe there's some inspo here that you guys might find interesting. Uh, before I get started to the top I'm wearing here is a favorite top of mine. It's actually a Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweater. Now this is a fantastic uh, sweater style. You've got four different options. You have different necklines. You've got higher neck, the low crew neck. Um, I've done it with a different colored sleeve. This is actually a Liberty um, sweater knit that I purchased from Tazudi, which would have been about three years ago now. Um, but love, love this fabric so much. It's beautiful to wear. And I've got it on with some navy sweatpants. So it's really, really freezing outside. It's, I think, 10 degrees. A little um, sneak peek of spring weather that we had it didn't last too long here in Victoria. We are racked of really, really cold conditions here again. But from what I've seen, the forecast has some beautiful spring weather coming up for next week. Now, we've had a bit of a sad week here. Uh, my dear father-in-law, Mario, has passed away at the age of 86. Uh, he'd been unwell for uh, on and off for many years. He'd battled through lots of different illnesses, uh, including bowel and liver cancer, which he ended up beating. Um, that was about 15 years ago, but unfortunately his heart had given out just this week. Um, so it was quite unexpected. Um, but yeah, so we're in the process of organizing uh, funeral with family. Um, yeah, so it's been one of those weeks. We've had a really, really busy week um, processing orders as well. So I know a lot of you have been sending me emails and I've taken uh, a day or two to get back to a few of you. So my apologies there, but of course, uh, everything with family sort of comes first, but I'm trying to keep up as best as I can with the orders that are going out because I know a lot of you are loving those new fabrics. I'm actually planning on uh, making myself something to wear for the funeral. I know it doesn't seem very important. Um, that's probably the last thing I should be worrying about, but looking through the wardrobe and trying to find more demure uh, or deeper, darker colors, things that aren't too bold in print. Of course, you don't have to wear black, but I, I like to wear black uh, as a sign of respect. And I've just realized that I don't have many plain black or, or dark colored clothes. So I wouldn't mind making myself a couple of things that I can wear uh, to the funeral as well. And maybe the things that I can wear um, just regular day-to-day -day basis as well. Um, so a couple of things I had printed out for quite some time. One was the Tazuti Mahalia skirt. Now this is a really lovely, simple um, A-line skirt, lower at the back than at the front, just a smidge. And I decided to make uh, one of these. I've just cut the fabric out in the black ponty from the online store, the viscose ponty. I'm gonna make myself one of those black skirts because I just think, um, I don't, look, dresses, I really wanna make more spring dresses and I wanna wait till uh, I get some warmer weather to wear um, to make some nice um, short sleeve things. So even though the weather's still very cool here, I really didn't feel like making another wintery dress. I'm really getting into that spring mode. So I thought a skirt might be a really good option and I could wear a blouse with it. Um, and that got me thinking about blouses and how many beautiful blouse patterns are out there that you can really dress up and down. So I'm going to make sure I talk today about my favorite blouse patterns. I'm actually going to be having a series I think you guys are going to love because I've also had people um, emailing me, asking me for suggestions on what they can make with my beautiful linen viscose blends that are in store. It's a gorgeous prints. And I also have some linen cottons coming very shortly from Nera to Hanson. So a lot of people want some inspo about what to make and what I personally would make. So I'm going to be having like a three-part um, series on, yeah, on different blouses and patterns that I think are great to make and one of those vlogs will be all about basic tops that are woven that you can make for 1.5 meters of fabric and that's really important too because if you don't want to splash out and getting you know enough to make a, a long dress or a maxi dress and you want to just make a top maybe with 1.5 meters i think some great suggestions with patterns that i have found either tried and true patterns in the past that i've loved making that i think you guys are going to love too so today i want to talk about patterns that are a bit more unique with blouses. So I've got my skirt pattern here ready to sew up and that shouldn't take me too long because that pattern, the Mahalia, looks very, very simple. I'm making the 14 and graded out to a 16 at the waist, but being that thick, wide elastic at the 
top, I think it's quite easy to bring it in and not tighten if it's too big. She wouldn't mind making the Evans blazer, which is a knit blazer pattern from Hey June Patterns. That looks like a really lovely, um, kind of shorter style with that angular front. Might be really nice with that skirt. Um, as I say, we're not wanting to make a dress, but I think separates might be more the way to go. And a Ponty knit jacket is always so practical. If it is cool weather, I can just pop it on over a blouse. Now the blouse that I would love to make to wear uh, is from beautiful fabric that was sent to me from Gabrielle Cloth Edit quite some time ago now, um, towards the start of the year. It's a beautiful cotton embossed print, really, really pretty. Probably gonna have to wear a cami underneath it, but you can see the beautiful kind of flocked uh, fabric there. I think it will uh, make a really nice blouse. Um, so it got, to, got me to thinking about puff sleeve blouses and the different options that are out there. There are so many beautiful puff sleeve blouses to choose from. I've got a list here I want to go through with you guys. Uh, and But another thing before I get started too, uh, I actually had planned to do a release for Fiber Mood that were having their link party, of course, their brand new issue that is out this week. Uh, that because of everything that's happened with family this week, I, I really had to put that on the back burner. Um, but I have got the pattern printed out ready to make. And the um, pattern I was going to make was the Kicker by Fiber Mood, which is a really lovely a boho style dress that you can quite easily make a blouse with as well. So that will be coming. It just will be happening a little bit later than I had anticipated. And I actually have got some really lovely um, seersucker fabric in the online store that I think you guys are going to love. I was thinking about making the blouse or even maybe the dress, but maybe not the long line or the midi in this really lovely 100% uh, cotton gingham seersucker, which is a really lovely, quite a big check. And I just think cotton sea sucker is one of the loveliest fabrics to wear against the skin too. But really love this. Uh, it's called Cinnamon Spice, this color. So yeah, there is a little bit online there. And I really am looking forward to making that blouse or dress up, depending on what I um, decide on. But um, the Fiber Mood patterns are just brilliant. I love their dresses and their blouses. And I think they're, they're really capturing exactly what I want to wear uh, as far as you know, more kind of easy fit, wearable and comfortable things. Um, so that one is printed out. And of course, you don't have to sign up to Fiber Mood Mag if you don't want to um, trace their patterns. I like to buy the mag to get inspiration and love looking through the photography. But personally, I would prefer the PDF pattern and I'll download that and uh, make it up that way. So that is uh, the lovely kicker, which will be happening in the future. It got me to thinking about how many beautiful puff sleeve blouses there are out there. And I'm trying to narrow down the particular style that I want to make. But I'm just going to take you through a list of patterns that are out there with a beautiful statement puff sleeve because it really is such an on-trend thing at the moment. I know a lot of people have gone down that whole coastal grandma route. Uh, I know it's very popular and especially over in the US at the moment. Um, personally for me, I yeah, I still like a statement bright and bold print. I'm really not one for muted uh, you know, colors with chambrays and linens, although I love to wear natural fibers. I am all about color on this channel. So I did have someone write to me and recommend that I should be following that whole coastal grandma trend, but I am not always on trend with, the, with particular trends. I like to take bits and pieces from lots of different trends and put them into my own lifestyle and things that I would wear. So yeah, I, I love a bold, bright print. Um, I sometimes like a more demure print, um, but I'm not really scared of venturing into different um, different trends, um, but I really am not a huge trend follower unless it's something that personally for me really excites me in my own lifestyle. So let's talk about um, puff sleeve blouses. So the ones that I've narrowed down, there's quite a big list here. These are ones um, tried and true patterns that either I've tried some myself or if I haven't tried these, I've actually looked at and thought, well, that they look like a really nice pattern. So I'd love to hear if any of these that you guys have tried yourselves and you'd like to let me know, please write in the comments and you let me know how you found that pattern to be. The first puff sleeve blouse would be from Itch to Stitch Patterns. This is the Lamont blouse. It's got no buttons at the front. It's a real statement um, sleeve and it has got some like princess seams or some paneling that I think it looks lovely. It's quite a fitted style. Like most Itch 
stitch to stitch patterns. Um, she does tend to verge on the more fitted, um, finished look. Uh, although this, this size range is also fantastic up to, I think, a 40. Um, yeah, so it's a really great inclusive um, size range on there. There's also the Seychelles blouse, which has a really lovely pleated style puff sleeve and more of a V-neck. So that one I think is a really lovely look. And each to stitch patterns always have fantastic uh, instructions there to follow. And she does have so many beautiful blouse patterns, but they're the two that have caught my eye. And I'm thinking uh, specifically for this fabric, what to use uh, for this fabric uh, itself to wear with the uh, Mahalia skirt. So these are, there's so many options here, um, but I'll be choosing probably one of these. Uh, the other pattern is another tried and true favourite, the uh, Friday Pattern Company Sagebrush Blouse. Beautiful puff statement sleeve. It's quite a simple top. It has a lovely tie at the back and it's very easy to hack into a dress. And it also has the bias binding and you can add that frill onto the front. But I've also seen people do it without the frill and it looks equally as beautiful. But very simple pattern, great size range as well on Friday Pattern Company patterns. Um, but such a lovely sleeve. So I've made that one in the past in a, a gorgeous uh, art gallery rayon. Uh, and that's another thing I'm actually looking at getting in, in the future is some beautiful art gallery rayons. Um, so they are yeah, definitely on my radar to have in the store. And I know a lot of you have asked for the art gallery rounds as well because of their unique prints and quality. The other pattern that I have uh, made in the past and thought this would make a beautiful blouse would be the chalk and notch wren pattern. Now the wren you can either make in the, the short sleeve. It's got a really lovely puff sleeve with like a lantern shape. So almost like a 3D looking sleeve. And you can also do it in the long sleeve. Uh, you can make it in a dress or a blouse. You can also either opt in to have the darts that shape in the back or no darts. Last time I made it, I didn't have darts, but I think I, I made a note to say that I would like to try it with the darts to get that little bit of waist shaping. I also love the um, the hack that, that has been done with that frill on the shoulder as well. So you can do quite a few different options with the Wren. And of course, Chalker Notch patterns are always one of my favorite indie pattern companies. And one of the uh, first ones that I tried out when I started sewing um, a few years back now for my own wardrobe. And I think that um, 2014 was when I really started venturing into um, pattern making or clothing, you know, wardrobe making for myself, even though I'd sewn for years, that would be the year that I started seriously thinking about um, making my own wardrobe. And it's amazing to see how far things have come. Back then, of course, there wasn't as many indie pattern designers around. And the ones that were there were very predominantly uh, a lot of vintage looking dresses uh, and things that I've clearly moved away from now. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting to see uh, how far things have come in the indie pattern making world, especially for things like size inclusivity. So things have really um, taken a turn for the better there, which is great. So that was the Wren from Chalk and Notch. The other very, very popular blouse that I've been tossing up whether to make or not for quite some time now, I think this um, beautiful black cotton would be stunning. And that's the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. Now the Anthea blouse I think has been upgraded with sizes. It's quite a high neck, which one thing that I kind of looked at and thought, I don't know if it's too high for me, but I really love the dramatic puff sleeve. And I think you could do a beautiful feature with buttons down the front with that. I like the fact that it's not too overly fitted around the waist as well. It's quite a sort of a, uh, it's a little bit more on the floaty side. I wouldn't call it fitted or cropped or boxy. It's sort of in between all of those. And I think that's why I love the look that you can either tuck it in or have it out over jeans. So that is the other option. Uh, another puff sleeve that I've made in the past with a beautiful um, dramatic sleeve would be the Marsha style Courtney blouse. That has got a lovely either sort of half sleeve, you can make it longer, you can do it in a dress. And there's plenty of options for that one as well. Um, and the blouse I made was at the start of the year and the Courtney blouse looked really lovely on. It's um, that real art smock style vibe that it gives off there. Um, and I do really love Marsha style patterns and that I think would look really lovely in that black cotton. Um, some more puff sleeve styles that I think you guys would love.
Uh, there's the style like Clementine blouse. That is a beautiful puff sleeve and it is a square neck. And I really love the look of a square neck. Sometimes I find that if the square is too deep, I am forever picking up my sleeve. So that's one thing I really uh, that really concerns me, especially with a strappy um, dress or top with a square neck. It has a strap. I am constantly picking up my sleeve. So I find that if you're like me and you do have the more slopey shoulders, that can be a bit of a problem because you don't have that neckline to kind of hold you up. Um, so that's another uh, really nice option, but yeah, that's one thing I'm sort of dubious about. Um, the other is the Verona by Starlike. It's a really lovely, uh, very easy fit with some beautiful pleating around the neckline and it gives that really soft drapey effect. But that also has a really lovely sleeve. And there's also the Florence by Starlike. So Starlike has so many beautiful woven pattern, um, pattern styles there to choose from with lots of different um, puff dramatic sleeves. Now the next one I've looked at, I've looked at it for quite a while and I've tossed up whether it would be my cup of tea because of the elastic around the waist, but I know there are hacks to remove that. If you're like me and you find that things with elastic waist right up and you're forever sort of repositioning them. Um, the sleeve on this, however, is so stunning that it might override the fact with that elastic, I could easily take that out. And that's the Tazuti Hillary blouse. It has a gorgeous long sleeve, very, very billowy bishop sleeve with kind of an elastic across the shoulder. I think it's really stunning. It has like a boat style neck. Um, that would be beautiful also in a shift dress or yes, I say a blouse, you don't have to have the elastic, you can remove it. And there is also a hack to make that in the short sleeve. And that again has the option with a short sleeve for like that lantern style, um, quite big three dimensional puff sleeve. And I know to Zudi they've done a hack, uh, they've done a blog post on how to hack that to remove the elastic and to shorten the sleeve. So it's great when you can buy a pattern and see that there are alternative hacks to make that blouse into so many different um, different styles. Yeah. Fiber Mood, of course, are the, I would say, the premier brand for puff sleeves. They have so many beautiful dramatic, like boho style um, dramatic sleeves. The Fiber Mood Wonder I've made in the past is a really lovely, unique kind of um, puff sleeve, but it has like a pleating detail. So it gives this gorgeous volume, but real structure to the puff that it really makes it stand up and out. So I can't explain uh, what it is about the styling. There's just something really pretty about the way it sort of sort of pops up and it has a like a lace up um, detail at the front. You can either put eyelets in there and put that little lace up. You can either make it put a ribbon or a little bit of rope detail, some tassel, or just make the um, string out of, you know, the, the tie out of the own fabric the blouse is made of too. So I've made that in the past and loved how that's come up. Um, so that's the Wanda and the Wanda can be made in a dress as well. The Norma blouse. Now, the Norma I've had printed out for about a year or so now. Never made it. A really pretty style, kind of half puff sleeve and a lovely sort of soft V-neck and button front. And it's a really popular pattern. So many people have gone ahead and made this and loved it. From what I've seen, it is quite a bit more fitted around the waist. So I'd have to do a bit of grading there, I think. But I think that would come up really pretty in that black uh, embossed fabric it would um, probably really set off the style I think it's the right fabric choice for that so that is one I would say that is definitely in my top three to choose from um, but if you've made the normal before I'd love to hear how you've gone with the sizing and what you thought about the actual pattern because it is such a popular pattern on the internet um, the other one that's got a lovely puff sleeve is the Mindy, but then again, it has got the deep square neck. I have seen people make this in a top or a dress and it looks really lovely. It's got a nice sort of floaty style sleeve, but that sort of square neck with that um, sort of band across the bust. So really pretty pattern. And there's also another new pattern that I have got printed out, but haven't sewn it up because I want to make myself one for spring in the uh, lovely soft cotton gauze that I've got in my stash. And that is the Fiber Mood Viva. It can be made in a kind of midi dress or in a blouse. And that again has a really lovely sleeve detail um, with a, a nice structured square neck. So I think that one would be uh, really lovely for a spring dress. There's also the Fiber Mood Dolly. Now the Dolly I've made before in a lovely soft um, viscose fabric, a bright black um, and bold Frida fabric. Um, that one was also really, really pretty, but maybe a bit more with, sort of with that tie neck heading away from the detailing that I would like to have. I think I'm heading more into the button territory, but we'll wait and see. 
And there's also the Pattern Scout Romy, which I did make myself one of these back from my first uh, bespoke box. It was the Pattern of the Month in there. And the Romy, of course, can be made in a dress or in a wrap front blouse. But that, again, has a beautiful kind of puff structured sleeve detail. And it is really a lovely a style with that peplumy waist. Um, but definitely could see another one of those in the future to make. So they are all my picks for puff sleeve blouses. I'd love to hear if there's one that you've made out of that lot and that you'd go back and make again, or if there's one that you can think of that I haven't recommended, I would also love to hear that because, yeah, sometimes it gets so hard uh, looking through, especially things that are size inclusive. I find that I like to try and make sure I mention to you guys things that um, have got a more inclusive size range. I think that appeals to more viewers that way too. So I'm going to actually have another episode coming up after this that will be with my new linen and uh, viscose fabrics. I'm going to be talking about patterns to make that you only need 1.5 meters. So that will be coming up very soon. Then I'm also going to be doing a special boho pattern um, episode that's all about my favorite boho style blouses. And that is one uh, fashion trend that I absolutely love. And I know a lot of you do too. So more of those fluid floaty long style and tunic style blouses and things that you can make um, with things like linen, viscose, rayon, uh, and nice soft cottons and voils for heading into spring and summer. So that'll be coming up very shortly. So I hope you're excited about these new episodes. I think it's, it's great to have some um, pattern inspiration to keep you guys guessing. As I say, a lot of you guys have been asking me for uh, my advice on what you would, I would make with particular patterns. And I think if I have these episodes out, it's one way you guys can go back and reference. So all the patterns that I, I speak about are listed in the description box uh, underneath this episode so you can go back for referencing those and yeah I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and also if you've enjoyed the episode today I, I really appreciate the thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed I uh, don't forget to do that as well before you love me and leave me so thank you so much we'll catch up with you very shortly and we'll, um, we'll do some sewing great bye for now